Ugh. Got a, a fly. Ugh. Fly straight into my mouth. Well, hello everyone. Welcome along to uh, this little video. I've no idea whatsoever whether the video is working as it should be, whether the camera's working. You may have seen there that uh, in the mirror I have kind of cobbled together my uh, GoPro, I think it's a Hero 7, I don't know because it's such a long time since I actually went out on a bike uh, and uh, even longer since I did a kind of a motor vlog style thing. So no idea whatsoever whether the sound's working, whether the video is working and of course I will find out later on when I get back home and do all of the, the usual oh my god why is nothing working um, but hopefully not. Now the problem, part of the problem is um, getting the angle just right and what I mean by that is when you're on a bike uh, you're kind of wanting to get a little bit of the bike down here and some view up front but not having a kind of monitor that I can just look down at and say right am I in the right position and because I've just not done this for such a long time I don't know whether I've got this camera in the right position or not so as I say we will find out hopefully it's kind of usable um, don't know I did find out by trying to uh, go online and have a look at the latest GoPro I think it's a GoPro Hero 11 Black I was trying to look for the uh, the creator kit which as I understand it has more in the way of a kind of uh, simpler way I suppose of uh, adding an external microphone I don't know if I can get hold of one of those there were certainly some of them available online um, but I wanted to try and because I'm going to try and do a few things this uh, this is kind of Good Friday now so I want to try and get out and do a few vlogs and visits here and there during the Easter weekend while I'm not at work and of course to do that I'd have to get the camera that I was trying to think of getting um, well today really so rather than having it posted over the Easter weekend and you know is it going to be here isn't it going to be here just having it all kind of set up bought charged ready to go fit to the helmet uh, would have been the best way of doing it so wanted to get hold of a GoPro Hero 11 creator kit uh, from a shop and of course these days you can't really just sort of turn up somewhere can you and hope that somebody has something in stock it seems almost a rarity to find any business of any size that actually carries physical stock of anything so you sort of turn up somewhere and say well you know you can get it online and you're thinking well yeah I can but I'm trying to support you as a business as a bricks and mortar business by turning up and buying something here rather than going online but yeah it just seems that that has completely fizzled out nowadays so I then put that on the back burner and said right okay I'm not getting a GoPro Hero 11 black creator kit now I suppose I could just get the Hero 11 but then I think I would have unless this adapter for the Hero 7 still works which the way GoPro does things it probably won't I haven't looked into that uh, I wouldn't actually have the mic then so I wouldn't be able to assuming of course any of this is working now I wouldn't have the mic to be able to do that it is warmer today than I expected it to be so I've kind of dressed up in gear that has been appropriate for like recent times uh, but today just feels a little bit warmer so there's not a lot of wind it's a very nice day blue skies fluffy clouds sort of day that uh, bikers get out now of course it is Good Friday so presumably most people 
or well yeah I guess most people are not working so it's going to be a bit like a weekend I am going down now to a place uh, I think it's called Four Ways Cafe down in Northwich just because I either haven't been there before or if I have I can't remember <laughs> so I'm sort of going down there for a bit of a you know just one of those little kind of what else can I do differently now I'll stop here because these lights have turned to red um, why am I actually here doing this because you may have if you know you have come back to this channel over the years seen as I haven't really done a great deal on here in the last couple of years um, well probably the last kind of eight years I've had this kind of trapped nerve in my neck which just got worse and worse over time and to the point where last year I decided to sell my motorbikes and that meant of course that I couldn't do any of this kind of out and about on the bike stuff so I sold the bikes and then this year it's not been as bad I'll let him through the wrong side it didn't look like he was gonna do that in the red Safira um, yeah so I sold the bikes and regrettably so because uh, one of those bikes was the Multistrada 1260S it had like four four and a half thousand miles on it carbon all at the front end it was terming down the exhaust system all the rest of it uh, and I sold it to a Ducati dealership the one um, not the one I actually bought it from but um, one of the local ones uh, in in the northwest let's put it that way and they I asked him what was a fair price for it which was probably my error because realistically you really can't trust <laughs> to get a fair price if you ask a dealer can you at least that's what I found out I've never really had a situation before though that I can recall where a dealer has really undervalued a bike but in this instance only gave me um, I think something from what I understand went on to sell the bike the very same day or the, or the very next morning uh, and made something like three and a half grand on it and you know you do expect them to make a little bit of money on it uh, you do expect them to make some money on it but crazy crazy profit with no overheads on it whatsoever because everything was in perfect condition it really was in perfect condition and I do look after my bikes so you know it's not it's not like there was anything that really needed doing to it so yeah huge regret but sold the bikes sold the Grom the Grom was a different story I mean the guys at Craig's Honda gave me a reasonable price for it and um, came and collected it just did everything really that uh, that you would want somebody to do if you were trading your bike in or if you were selling your bike to a trader so a complete two different completely different experiences and it was disappointing the the Ducati one because I have done videos for them and I've kind of sent at least six people that I know have bought bikes from there uh, to this particular dealership and unfortunately even when I spoke to the director who was on holiday at the time apparently um, he was pretty much speak to the you know the, the general manager who frankly was uh, well I'm gonna say not very professional in my opinion so I won't be going back there again I certainly would buy another Ducati though um, and that's something I may do in the coming um, well probably year 
So my plans are that I'm going to retire early at the end of this year from work. And if my neck does continue to feel sort of okay, which is, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm not going to say it's not painful because there are times when it is, but you've got to kind of live your life, haven't you? So I, I'm going to try and get out the bike a little bit more. So what have I done right now? Yeah, in a year's time, I can probably think about, do I buy something again? Like another Ducati twin. Um, and as I say, probably the Multistrada 1260S if it's still about. In this year, I'm going to use this little bike. It's a Honda CB500X. And it's a bike that's nice and straightforward. Nothing major fancy about it. Pretty basic in comparison to the other bikes but actually does have a reasonable amount of punch it's only 471 cc um, so it's not like you know it's <laughs> it's almost a third of the power that I had with the Multistrada but actually I'm really pleased with it it does some great stuff and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we get out of this this town centre So let's talk a little bit about the uh, the Honda CB500X. It is uh, what you might call an A2 license friendly bike. It is, uh, as I say, 471cc. It is a twin engine, parallel twin engine. So it does have a, a kind of a feeling of a bit of torque. Ugh, got a, a fly. Ugh, fly straight into my mouth. Got Just got the visor open. You know, sometimes as you do on days like today where it's not too bad, just got the visor open, just a crack. And uh, a fly went straight through, straight to my mouth, just as I was talking. So, try again. The Honda CB500X is an A2 friendly bike that has a little bit of oomph. It does uh, come as a fairly standard bike. Uh, there's no cruise control, there's no heated anything, there's no charging port ports, there's no centre stand, there's no, you know, you basically have the option of adding lots of things to it. So I bought it new about two weeks ago uh, from Honda in Manchester, Yule's Honda in Manchester. Really good service. I basically rang them and said, have you got this bike in stock? They said, yes, we have. I said, can I come and collect it in a couple of hours time? Uh, bearing in mind it's a brand new bike. They said, yeah, we'll get it registered. We'll get it turned around. We'll get it ready for collection and you can come and collect it. Now, bearing in mind it was a brand new bike and they would have had to have PDI inspected it and done whatever bits and pieces you need to do with it. I thought that was a pretty good um, turnaround service from them so well done to uh, Hules Honda in Manchester I'm going back for the first service next weekend I've done 470 miles as I just looked down at the clock uh, and it's due its first service at 600 but I'll probably do a little bit more over the Easter weekend well I'll definitely do a little bit more of the Easter weekend they said a couple of hundred miles either way is a major issue so I've got up to 800 miles so um, the bike itself is fantastic on fuel economy. Mine is now showing an average of 84 miles per gallon. 84 miles per gallon. Um, I don't think I've ever had a bike that's done that sort of performance before. Not that I can remember. Um, so it is pretty good going, is that sort of uh, MPG. And with fuel as it is at the minute, you can't really sniff at that, can you? You know, it, it's nice to have a big kind of grunty bike that has everything going on, but it's also nice to have a bike that sort of has a version of that, but without having to spend a fortune on fuel. I mean, compared to cars, let's be honest, bikes in general, you're not spending a fortune on fuel, but 
even better to have one that does 84 miles per gallon. So, really good fuel economy and the basics of the bike, you know, the things that you only really experience when you ride it is it's a smooth ride, it corners well, it's got decent stock tyres, can't remember what they are, but they're sort of like a bit of a sort of semi, you know, gravel and tarmac kind of uh, setup. It's got great mirrors, they look like the sort of mirrors you get on sort of a, a BMW, they are that sort of shape and size so you get very stable no vibrations you can see what's going on behind you easily it's got some nice features like this uh, accessory bar just behind the GPS now the GPS is the BMW Navigator 6 that I've had now for I don't know five years four or five years something like that and uh, still working well and it's basically a Garmin Zumo under a BMW kind of brand by the look of it but that just goes on to a a standard mounting plate for Garmin and then that just goes on to that accessory bar um, using a RAM mount you know I'm still using all the same sorts of technology I'm sure things some people have different ways of doing it nowadays uh, maybe even more cost effectively but I, I'm still using what I've got so luggage wise it comes with no luggage but you can buy a top box and a back plate and I think you can buy panniers and all the usual stuff you can get for bikes like this bus out um, so yeah I did get the top box and the sort of mounting plates and various pieces to go on the back now when I asked them down at the main dealers as I was buying the bike did they have one in stock they said no they didn't um, and he checked online to see how much it would be to order the kit uh, and he's quoting me over 600 pounds so I said immediately not interested in that just too expensive um, because to be honest you know if you were going to buy some decent luggage for any bike you go for all the aluminium stuff um, if you're going to go for the plastic stuff then you don't want to be paying through the nose to get it so then I went to uh, the website the Honda website and they were saying there was a deal on right now where the whole kit was £240. So I rang Craig's Honda, they said, yeah, we've got one in stock. Um, went and collected it. Now, the only problem with it was when I got it, there were three big chips on the kind of metal bit. So I've had to touch that up uh, rather than really, I suppose, I should have taken it back. But the hassle of doing that, particularly when I'd like stripped off the, the passenger grips from the you know the original stock bike and was sort of halfway through the job when I realized that the item as I unpacked it had these three big chips in it I thought can I be bothered to go through all the hassle I'll just put some touch-up paint on it that's what I did and so yeah I mean it is um, as with all bikes by the time you start putting accessories on them they start getting more and more expensive this was six six nine nine I think so six thousand seven hundred pounds on the road with a year's tax on it. Honda sort of brand this is a, a small adventure type of bike because it is quite high up on the suspension. Now, from the previous model, they've done some fantastic work and they've got show of suspension on the front upside down forks. I have to say for a bike of this size, I am really impressed with the suspension. Um, it's not adjustable, but it just is kind of, well, maybe for me, my weight setup, my size and everything, the bike just, almost out of the box seems to fit me just right now I am five foot ten so I guess I'm at average size um, and therefore things would just presumably be uh, set up in a way that would just fit not always the case so with some bikes what else have I got on here so the, the other good feature about it is that it's got LED headlights LED LED indicators and tail light uh, it's got a uh, front brake hydraulic clutch is just a cable clutch so uh, but the great thing about the cable clutch is it is incredibly light I mean really one finger stuff uh, so fantastic clutch for a cable clutch it's working great goes into neutral really easily when you stop I know some bikes can struggle uh, particularly on the BMWs they used to struggle like hell to get into and some of the Ducatis as well uh, trying to get it into neutral 
Uh, this doesn't have that problem at all. It's got a slip assist clutch, I think it's called. And uh, just everything about it is uh, really well set up for a little bike. So it is, it, you know, the seat is pretty good as well. I've been on it for a couple of hours at a time and in many ways the seat is, um, I thought it was going to come out but it wasn't, the seat is more comfortable than the Ducati Multistrada seat was. That, in fact, that was the only thing really on the Multistrada that I had an issue with. Everything else I thought it was a fantastic bike and I'd definitely look at getting another one. But the seat was a little bit hard. Right, are we ever going to get onto any roads where we can actually do a bit of riding? I'm just focusing on this bike behind me. He's probably going to want to get round, so I shall let him come around me and then he can overtake them if he wants to. And yes, it's clear enough to do a lot of overtaking, but I'm not in any rush today, actually. I'm just going to take it nice and easy enjoy the view and so on. Actually I'm surprised given he had the power he had that and the view he had that where there was clearly nothing coming that he didn't overtake both of those in one go actually. But, um, but yeah I guess that again is the difference between sort of the multi-strada. I could definitely get around these guys because we're going downhill and they're only doing like sort of 40-ish. Um, Lots of, there was lots of room I could have overtaken them, but not kind of uh, looking as much on, on as I get to my age now to um, to be racing around quite as much as uh, as is possible on bikes. What a view, what a fantastic... What's that flying up in the air there? Is that an aeroplane going into presumably Manchester? See it? I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but sort of descending there. Something fairly big. Turning this way now. You see it glinting there in the sunshine. Don't know if you can see it on camera. The problem is with the GoPro, um, doesn't really have much of a lens that sees anything at distances or sensor or whatever it is that makes that difference. So yeah, a fantastic uh, day today for biking, almost perfect, well it probably is a perfect day for biking really. I have noticed that probably, as with everything, with the economy, with post-pandemic, blah blah blah, the road conditions aren't quite what they used to be. Uh, not that road conditions have necessarily been perfect, but they haven't. There are certain places where you'll go around and think, Look at all that fly tipping there, disgusting, honestly. Um, yeah, you'll get around certain bends and you'll kind of have your wheel in where, you know, the perfect position for the bend, for example, and there'll be a big pothole there. So you have to do a quick in-bend adjustment, which is something that I don't particularly uh, enjoy doing. We'll give him a nod. No, no nods today. Another temp, no nods whatsoever. Bollocks to him. <laughs> I mean, it's like, really? Don't know if you can see that view over there of the reservoir and the sun just sort of catching the bottom of that hill. So, just in case the GoPro ended the video because the battery went flat, I'm recording a little outro here, um, and a kind of a bit of a quick glance around the bike. Um, it's a kind of a gun powder metal black or something it's called. Um, let's say 500cc CB500X Honda, um, so not a German or Italian bike this time, but just a straightforward little reliable Honda bike. It's got the LED headlights and indicators and 
yeah it's a pretty good little thing I mean it just uh, gets me about so at the minute I'm down here down by um, Starbucks I've just gone in there and taken out a mortgage to buy myself an orange juice and a little wrap as for something to eat kind of found myself here in the middle of some weird kind of semi-industrial next to the M60 motorway sort of roundabout area <clears throat> saw the Starbucks and thought well I'll just stop there there's a few aeroplanes going over going into uh, to Manchester Airport and yeah just a little bit of a a run out on the bike I was going to as I probably said in the video go down to this uh, four ways biker place but instead I've stopped here I had a quick look on Google Maps to see if there's any more motorbike stalls around here there might be one or two but because it's Good Friday I think a lot of them are either already closed or closing um, it's now kind of what time is it 14.09 so uh, I'll probably just plan a little route back now. No more battery on the GoPro to record any more today. And we will leave it there. So thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.